Hi folks, this is Dan Bell with Intratent, and today's video is going to be a demonstration walking you through creating a project center view in Microsoft Project Online. Currently I'm on the home page of my project web app environment, and what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll navigate to Project Center, I click on the tile, or I can click on projects in the navigation on the left, and that takes me to my Project Center. And those of you familiar with Project Center, this is basically your one-stop shop to look at all the projects in the organization. And of course, it depends on how you have the security configured, right? Um, so by default, if, you know, I think five views come in Project Center. And they basically look somewhat like this, right? You, you have basically the project name, you have start date, finish date, you have some other data points there as well. And of course, you have the Gantt chart off to the right. 99% of the time, you're gonna want something more than that. You're gonna to wanna to see the projects perhaps grouped by a data point. Uh, you, you, most organizations have something that they can categorize their projects by. Either it's by the status, what status they happen to be in, or if they're part of a program, part of a department or, or business unit, uh, things of that nature. And then you also may want to have graphical indicators that help communicate status. For instance, um, I may want to manage programs. I wanna therefore see the projects grouped by program. And then I wanna have graphical indicators so I can quickly and easily hone in on projects that are doing well versus those that may have troubles uh, with costs, my CFO campaign in this particular case, right? Therefore, we're looking at this view. There's my asset management campaign. These are the three projects that comprise that campaign. These are the costs and benefits for those three, and that's what the aggregate of them are. And then, of course, you can see how they are staged with regard to starting and finishing in the timeline here, okay? Uh, so that's really what we're shooting for here is to create basically this view. Um, I'm not necessarily going to create all the fields. I'm going to show you how the fields and so forth are created within the system. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is we'll run through looking at the different fields here, how the fields were created, the total benefits, total costs, schedule, project, and health. And then we'll look at the building blocks for the view itself and we'll create a duplicate of the summary by program here. Okay. All right. So to get started, we know we need to have the project health, project cost, and project schedule. All right, so let's go take a look at those fields. And to do that, we go to server settings and I navigate to enterprise custom fields and lookup tables. And here is project cost, right? There's your project health. Okay, and you're gonna have a project schedule as well. Those are the three fields. The thing to notice here is this, is that when I look at these columns here, it tells me what each of these columns represents. And this column where it says it represents whether or not the field has a formula. Notice I didn't use a formula for those graphical indicators, okay? You can use formulas to determine what color graphical indicator or what graphical indicator period to display um, automatically, right? So instead of me having to flip it to a different indicator, it can automatically be calculated based on certain variances between your baselines and actuals typically. But what I did is I actually use a lookup table and um, the reason I'm using a lookup table is just to keep it easy. We don't want to get tied down to a specific formula. You know, maybe we do the process outside of the tool set. Um, and therefore, when, when we do the management of the project, the status report every week, we come in here and if we need to, we actually update these indicators separately, right? Therefore, let's do this. Let's look at the first the uh, indicators lookup table because that would be needed first before you create the actual field, custom field. We'll click on the indicators lookup table and here it is and basically it just has the values of red yellow green and then i leave an unset value in there as well and uh, what this allows me to do is it's, it allows me to make this a required field and um and we can set it to unset if we don't want to put a red yellow or green there but um, i like to have an unset field in there rather than having just a blank value in case nobody selects anything in this case all right that's that's all there is to it in this indicator table therefore we're done here now let's go ahead and take a look at project health first. And that will be the first field that you would want to create, right? So we'll look at it quick and then we'll show you a walk through just very quickly how you would create it from scratch. There's the name, just a brief description. And you specify it looks and it uses a lookup table. And then you specify, do you want it to have a default value upon project creation? And in this case, I select on set. And then down below is where we specify what those values, those textual values in the lookup table equate to as far as an image is concerned, right? So this is the values to display section. Do we want to display this data, which would be the actual value in the lookup table, or do we want to translate those textual values to graphical indicators, which is what we choose. Red's gonna equal the red diamond, yellow, yellow diamond, green, green diamond, and then the unset is a dash. 
Okay, and then notice like I was mentioning before, I do require that this has information in it and that's why we do default it to unset. So, so that's what it looks like created. So let's just assume for a moment, you know, I'm, I'll go through the steps of, of creating this, right, and we'll call it okay, Project Health 2. As far as entity, what this is saying is what, what is this describing? Is it describing a project? task or resource and it's pretty obvious here at this point right it's a project center view it's describing a project um, what is the data that's actually being evaluated here well it's text within a lookup table therefore we'll leave text here and then we specify the custom attribute next and then the next selection is going to be lookup table and then we specify the lookup table it's actually going to evaluate and recall that that's the indicators ta table and uh, since as I said before I do want to uh, a default value in here, I tick that checkbox and then I select the drop down and it brings up the values that are in there and I can select my unset value. So far we're looking good. Uh, what do we want to display here? Values, it has data selected by default, meaning if I, if I were to leave it like this, then I would see a text value of unset in the field, right? But we don't want to do that. We want it like this. And what we would do is do equals in each case and we'll go ahead and add one more, right? And then we'll say red and then yellow. And then the, this one was green and then this one was unset. And then we can make this, we, anything that's red, you know, you have, you have a number of things to, in here to choose from, right? Um, the next one's gonna be yellow, next one's going to be green. And then this, I typically make this it's just me, but I make it a uh, gray dash just because the, the the dash is not too obtrusive, but it's there and there's some kind of value. So, you know, something was filled out and it had to equate um, some kind of calculation in the background to do that. And that is it. We're good with that. Uh, do I want to show data values in the tool? So, well, you know, not really because they don't really mean anything. If I, if instead of red, I chose something different, maybe to say, well, the variance is between 10 and, and more percent uh, between baseline and actuals. Yeah, that would be something a little bit more meaningful. But since it says red, yellow, green, there's really not a lot of value in showing the data tips. Uh, do I want information required? I would tick yes. And then that's literally what we would do to create the new custom field, right? I'm not going to create it because they're already there. That was the project health. We'll take a real quick look at project cost. Select that. Again, it uses indicators as we can see there, but again, name, specify the lookup table, value of unset, same thing, red, yellow, green, unset. Okay. And then we do want it to have default information in here. And then lastly was the schedule. And they're, they're all identical, so it's very similar. Therefore, when you get the one down, you automatically are gonna get the, the other ones down as well because they're all identical, just different names, okay? Default value, lookup table, equate it to a actual indicator, required has values, done. Now, if you recall, I had a couple of currency fields in here, right? One's total benefits, okay? If we click on that, we can take a peek here. And literally, we, we just give it a name of total benefits. It describes a project. It's a type of cost because it's monetary, it's financial. And um, what do we want to display? We want to display the actual value that's being typed in there. Um, I'm not requiring data in here at this point. Your total cost is identical to this, right? So total cost, go over here. Again, it's going to be project cost type. Okay, it's going to have no custom attributes. It's going to display the data. Again, no info is required, right? So again, it's the steps, theoretically, if we were to create the field, and I'm not gonna create it, but um, we'll just go through the steps. It's gonna be a project description. It's going to be something that holds a financial data point. We would want to actually see the values we type in there because they're gonna be a, a currency information. The behavior, we leave that alone because we don't have a workflow. We're all good with that. Do we want it to have information in there? Well, again, that would be up to you, but I, I specified no in this case. Very, very simple fields to enter. We're not gonna save them. We're all set with those two. And then lastly, um, you know, my, my, my view groups the projects by program because that's what I want to group them by. Think about your particular situation. You know, how do you folks categorize your projects? What would you like to see them grouped by? 
Um, you know, maybe you want to group them by status, the different statuses of your projects or some other attribute, right? But uh, simple to do, you just create a new lookup table first and you know, whatever it's going to be, okay? So it can be SBU for your strategic business unit. Um, unless you're gonna have hierarchy, you just leave the code mask to one level, okay? We're not gonna go into a lot of detail here. But, uh, you know, what are the values gonna be? Uh, SBU1. And again, I'm just keeping it real simple here. Okay, SBU2, SBU3. And as we create projects and assign them these different values and we have the, the view group by this particular field, we'll be able to see each program or each, each project tagged with this and then subsequently grouped by those and we'll see the aggregate, you know, total cost, total benefits and other information there. And, and that's literally how you create the lookup table. And then ultimately what you do is when you create the custom field, and so again, what did I say? I'm using program, okay? P-R-O-G-A-M. I'm not gonna actually click the save button here, but um, describes a project. Okay, it is text information. It is, again, a lookup table. What's the lookup table going to be here? It is going to be, oh, we have to select the right lookup table first. Program lookup table, do we want a default value in this case? Well, if you had an unset value, I'm not sure I have one. I do, right? So if you have an unset value, you know, it, it, so it, again, this is just me. I like it, for, I consider it a best practice of me. I use the unset value. Um, what are we gonna have it display, the actual data? Yes. Do you want this to require a field? Yes, in this case, since I have an unset value. And that is literally the, the process for creating the program field, which again, you know, going back to when we were first looking at that view, that's what my projects were grouped by. They were grouped by the program field. If you wanna look at the actual program field after it's created, we'll click on that and take a quick peek here. Program, I gave it a quick description here. Project, the type is text. It looks at the program field, it's an unset. Uh, I let it display the data, and again, I wanted to have data in there, force it to contain data. Right, so that's basically it for the actual fields. Then the next step would be to create a view to leverage those fields. Go back to my server settings, and then I would manage views. And in this case, a lot of times I'll start with an existing view. For instance, I like to start with summary all the time because it you know, contains a good mix of fields in it. Typically would copy it. And what I do is I go something like this. Summary by program two. We'll click okay. And then that's gonna create my view right here. And there's my summary by program two. You can see that's the one we're reviewing just a little while ago. We'll click on summary by program two. Name's good. Um, currently it, it has the default summary fields here, right? But remember we want project cost, project health, and project schedule. And we'll add those three. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these right next to, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right next to name, okay? Three, four, five, Eight. Yep. And then just move this last one. Okay, so there's health, cost, and schedule immediately to the right of name. So that's good. And then in order to group the projects by program, I do need to add the program field to the view. Let's go ahead and do that. There's program, so I'll add that. And now program's there. I just leave it off to the far right because I don't necessarily need to see it in a column because I'm grouping the projects by that. Okay. Now one quick little thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select project name and then I'm gonna expand the field to 200 pixels so I don't always have to adjust the project name field width. And then what I'm gonna do is go down to the grouping section and then what do I wanna group by? I want to group by the program field and there it is. All right, and uh, before I exit out of here, I do need to add those other fields in here, the total cost and total benefits, and there they are. And I'm gonna put them immediately to the right of the schedule. And let's get that one more. So there we go. So there's health cost schedule, and then we have total cost and total benefits. 
the groupings in there. All right, great. Let's click save. Awesome. Now let's go back to Project Center. Okay, we're in our, our default summary view. Let's go ahead and try to find uh, Program 2 there, Summary by Program 2. Click on that. And let's go ahead and straighten this out just a little bit. Get that over there. Uh, I obviously could change the divider placement and the width of this field, but these settings do persist. Therefore, this is typically a one-time situation. Go ahead and bring the that into focus, right? And we'll scroll out a little bit. And um, there you go. Project health, cost schedule, total cost, total benefits. Now we can see the aggregate of the program because I did choose to have this view grouped by the program field. Everything's looking good. And uh, yeah, so there you go. So that's, that's just a quick exercise. You know, again, use whatever field to categorize your projects that made sense to you, right? It might not be program, it might be business unit, it might be department, it might be something, whatever it is. Um, and uh, as well as the uh, indicators, you know, it, it doesn't have to be cost to schedule. You can think of other things that you want, use an indicators lookup table to allow you to assign the different colors and do the process outside the tool. Uh, however, hopefully you learned something from this particular video. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for other videos, we'd love to hear from you. Have a wonderful day and we will see you in a subsequent training video. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.